Hi, this is Congressman Frank Pallone. Thank you for joining me on Facebook Live. We try to do this every Friday around uh, noon or so. Um, today was a momentous day and it's been a momentous week. Uh, we just passed this morning the Build Back Better Act, which is the third prong, if you will, of an effort by uh, House Democrats uh, to basically deal initially with the coronavirus and its aftermath and then build the country back better with better jobs and better health care and trying to uh, address the climate crisis. So the Build Back Better Act, which was, uh, which was uh, voted on in the House and passed this morning, now goes to the Senate, is the legislation um, that primarily uh, focuses on health care and uh, climate needs of, of the three bills for the future. And so with regard to climate action, some of you know that I spoke last week about how I had gone to the, uh, the uh, conference in Glasgow to implement a climate action plan. Uh, and this bill that we voted on today does more than anything else that's been done in the Congress uh, to address climate action concerns. So just as an example, um, there's a methane emissions program in the bill. And when we were at the climate conference in Glasgow, uh, there was an international agreement uh, to move forward on reducing methane emissions, which is a major source of greenhouse gas emissions and therefore the warming of the planet. And uh, in this bill, uh, we have a program to catch uh, the emissions that you see sometimes, uh, if you're on the turnpike, for example, you'll see the uh, oil refineries that have the flare, uh, the flame, if you will. And this seeks to capture those emissions and reuse them uh, and so ultimately save uh, money, both for the industry as well as for uh, the uh, utilities or the consumers uh, who use the gas. Um, but in addition to that, uh, there are major climate provisions in this legislation, uh, trying to get utilities uh, from stop using fossil fuels, uh, trying providing homeowners with rebates if they, um, if they move towards renewable resources, uh, there's also a provision that would uh, prohibit um, drilling uh, off the shore of the Atlantic. You know how important it is to our coast that our coast uh, remain free of pollution and oil spills. And then on the health side, uh, the bill makes some uh, significant changes um, that came out of my committee, the Energy and Commerce Committee. Uh, for one, uh, we make sure that um, a higher level of subsidies to help people pay for their insurance uh, that they buy on the on the marketplace uh, is is extended for a longer period of time. Uh, we also have a uh, expand Medicare to include a hearing benefit for seniors, which is not available right now. Uh, we have we make the children's health insurance program permanent. We address maternal health. Uh, we have. Uh, as unfortunately one of the highest maternal health mortality rates um, um, in the developed world. And uh, there are just a number of provisions, most important, that, that try to deal, make healthcare more affordable. And probably the most important in that regard, which again, I was very much involved with, is trying to bring drug prices down and have the federal government negotiate drug prices and make sure that people, uh, seniors don't pay more than $2,000 a year out of pocket costs for their for their prescription drugs. So a lot in this bill, it now goes to the, to the Senate. Uh, we, do ex we worked a lot of these provisions out with the Senate, so we expect that they will hopefully very quickly in the next few weeks send it back uh, to the House and then it goes to the President. Now this, the second prong of this, uh, I call it the Build Back Better agenda, the uh, bipartisan infrastructure bill. I was at the White House, that passed last week and I talked about it. Uh, but this Monday, I was at the White House where the president signed that bill. And again, I won't repeat, but that's the bill that really invests in our infrastructure, things like uh, um, uh, the Gateway Tunnel, um, more uh, funding for mass transit in general, uh, but also um, infrastructure to upgrade the electricity grid so it ex accepts renewable resources. Uh, reinvigorating the Superfund program by taxing the chemical industry to pay for Superfund uh, toxic waste cleanups. Um, and the list goes on. 
So we really have accomplished a lot in the last two weeks. So I think in these between these two bills, the infrastructure bill and this Build Back Better Act, we've probably done more uh, to make a difference and help Americans and create jobs and make things more affordable than any other legislation uh, in the last 10 or 20 years. In any case, I also wanted to mention that um, my committee, uh, the Energy and Commerce Committee, uh, continues to forge ahead with other legislation. As you know, we deal with public health issues in general, so our committee advanced 12 public health bills uh, to improve the public health this week. Uh, these are things, some of which are disease uh, specific. So for ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, as it's often called, uh, we pass legislation uh, that makes it easier to access clinical trials and get drugs that might make a difference and prolong these people, people's lives that have ALS. We also held the hearing on securing uh, the clean energy supply chain. You're probably all so tired of hearing of a supply chain shortages in various sectors, but we're trying to deal with that, and this one deals with the supply chain for clean energy. Uh, so there's a lot going on that will continue to go on. But I did want to make a few announcements. I think some of these I've mentioned before or tweeted out, whether on Facebook, but let me remind you that New Jersey's open enrollment for health insurance, for health care insurance, is open. And if you want to buy health insurance or you want to change your policy, you can go to Get Covered dot nj dot gov for more information that's get covered dot nj dot gov for more information on buying health insurance in the uh, affordable care act marketplace uh, and as i mentioned and part of this legislation was to increase the level of subsidies to help people pay for their premiums also monmouth county residents who need rental assistance due to the COVID 19 pandemic can apply for the emergency rental assistance program the American Rescue Plan, which is the first bill that we did this year to deal with the COVID crisis, provided the program with funds to help income eligible households pay rent. And so you can find out more about that by visiting www.monmouthcountyerap.com. That's, that's monmouthcountyerap.com. And then, of course, children's, be I always like to talk about vaccinations because we encourage you to get vaccinated. Children between the ages of 5 and 11 are now eligible for a COVID-19 vaccine. To find a vaccination site, visit covid19.nj.gov finder. Uh, be sure to look for pediatric doses when you search for a location. You can also call the COVID-19 Vaccine Call Center at 855 5680545. Uh, the COVID-19 vaccine booster doses are now available in New Jersey for the J&J, &J, that's the Johnson & Johnson, Moderna, and Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines. And all adults who received a single dose of the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine are eligible for a booster at least two months after their shot. For individuals who received a two-dose Pfizer or Moderna COVID-19 vaccine, the following groups are eligible for a booster shot at least six months or more after their second shot, and that's 65 or older, long-term care residents, adults with underlying medical conditions, adults who work or live in a high-risk setting. And let me just conclude by thanking everyone uh, for joining me today. Have a good weekend and a happy Thanksgiving.